In 1533 CE, the Inca Empire stood as the largest empire globally, stretching from Quito in the north to Santiago in the south, encompassing western South America. Yet, the lack of effective integration of conquered populations, along with internal strife for the Inca throne and the devastating impact of European-introduced diseases, created vulnerabilities that others were quick to exploit. Francisco Pizarro arrived in Peru leading a remarkably small group of men, driven primarily by their pursuit of treasure. With superior weaponry, strategic tactics, and support from local groups eager for change, the Spanish managed to dismantle the Inca civilization in a remarkably short span. This collision of old world explorers with the new world resulted in a catastrophe of unparalleled proportions, marking one of the most significant humanitarian disasters in the history of the Americas. The Inca people referred to their expansive realm as Tawantinsuyo or Tawanansuyo, meaning land of the four quarters or the four parts together. At its heart was Cusco, considered the world center, surrounded by highways and sacred lines, sects, that radiated out to four quarters. Chinchesuyu, north, Antisuyu, east, Colasuyu, south, and Kunsuyu, west, covering ancient Ecuador, Peru, northern Chile, Bolivia, highland Argentina, and southern Colombia, the empire spanned an incredible 5,500 kilometers, 3,400 miles, north to south. Remarkably, a mere 40,000 Incas ruled over this vast expanse, governing around 10 million subjects who spoke more than 30 distinct languages. Central to Inca belief was the idea of divine entitlement to rule over conquered regions, rooted in their mythology of being created by the sun god Inti at Tiwanaku, Tiwanaku. This belief led them to consider themselves as the chosen people, often referred to as the children of the sun. The ruler of the Inca, regarded as Inti's earthly embodiment, governed with divine authority. In practical terms, this meant that those who spoke the Inca language Quechua, or Runasimi, were afforded special privileges. The noble class speaking this language held sway over significant political, religious, and administrative positions within the empire. The rapid ascent of the Inca empire was remarkable. Although Cusco had emerged as a prominent center during the early intermediate period, 1000 to 1400 CE, the process of regional consolidation began in the late 14th century CE with substantial conquests taking place in the 15th century CE. However, despite its relative youth, the empire was about to face its most formidable challenge. Francisco Pizarro and his partner Diego de Almagro, both in their mid-50s and coming from modest backgrounds, were driven by a thirst for adventure and riches. They led a small group of Spanish adventurers, hoping to replicate the gold treasures that their compatriots had found in Mexico's Aztec realm a decade prior. Embarking from Panama, they sailed down the Pacific coast in two small merchant ships called caravels. Their search took them through Colombia and the Ecuadorian coast, but the golden riches they sought remained elusive. This was Pizarro's third attempt at such an expedition, and it felt like his last chance to achieve fame and glory. In 1528 CE, Bartolomé Ruiz, the expedition's pilot, captured a raft off the coast loaded with treasure. This discovery hinted at the potential wealth of South America. Pizarro used this find to secure permission from the Spanish king, Charles V, to become the governor of any newly discovered territory, with the crown entitled to one-fifth of any discovered treasure. With a force of 168 men, including 138 veterans, 27 cavalry horses, artillery, and a friar named Father Valverde, Pizarro headed towards the Andes. By 1531 CE, he had reached and conquered Coac on the Ecuadorian coast, where he awaited reinforcements. The following year, more troops arrived, swelling the Spanish ranks to 260 men, including 62 cavalry. The force moved along the coast to Tumbes, pillaging and using violence against the native population. As they journeyed on, they encountered signs of a prosperous civilization, such as storehouses and well-constructed roads. They established a settlement called San Miguel, modern Piura, and by the end of 1532 CE, Pizarro was ready to make contact with the rulers of what appeared to be an immense and wealthy empire. Upon the foreign invaders' arrival in Peru, the Inca Empire was grappling with significant internal challenges. The empire, despite its vast expanse, was politically delicate and made up of conquered states held together by Inca military might and the taking of hostages. These hostages included important individuals and religious artifacts, ensuring compliance with Cusco's rule. Unpopular taxes were levied in the form of goods or labor, with many communities forcibly relocated or required to accommodate new loyalist groups. The Incas also imposed their religion on the conquered, although they allowed some gods continued worship as long as they were subordinate to Inti. Their distinctive art was spread throughout the empire, reinforcing the dominance of the ruling class. While there were certain benefits to Inca rule, like better infrastructure and occasional state-sponsored feasts, many regions experienced the burden of conquest. Consequently, loyalty to maintaining the empire was sometimes lacking when rival powers threatened Inca authority. Some areas, particularly in the north, were in a state of constant rebellion, 
and an ongoing conflict in Ecuador led to the establishment of a second Inca capital in Quito. Even more significantly, at the time of Pizarro's arrival, the Incas were embroiled in internal conflicts. Following the death of Inca ruler Huayna Capac in 1528 CE, his sons Huáscar and Atahualpa engaged in a destructive six-year civil war for control of the empire. Atahualpa emerged victorious, but the empire remained divided by factions yet to fully accept his rule. Adding to their challenges, the Incas were hit by a devastating epidemic of European diseases, like smallpox, which had spread even faster than the European invaders themselves. This epidemic claimed the life of Huayna Capac and wiped out between 65 to 90 percent of the population in some areas, leaving the empire vulnerable to invisible foes. On the 15th of November, 1532 CE, the Spanish forces approached the Inca town of Cajamarca in the Peruvian highlands. Pizarro conveyed his desire to meet the Inca king, Atahualpa, who was enjoying the local springs and basking in his recent victory over his rival, Huáscar. Atahualpa agreed to finally encounter the much-talked-about bearded white strangers who had been advancing from the coast. Surrounded by his powerful army of 80,000 soldiers, Atahualpa appeared to underestimate the threat posed by this small Spanish contingent. He made Pizarro wait until the following day for the meeting. The initial encounter between Pizarro and Atahualpa involved speeches, a shared drink, and observing some Spanish horsemanship. However, both sides harbored plans to capture or eliminate the other at the earliest opportunity. The next day, Pizarro took advantage of the intricate architecture of the Inca town and set up an ambush, waiting for Atahualpa's arrival in the main square. As the royal procession entered, Pizarro fired his small cannons and his armored men charged on horseback. In the ensuing battle, where firearms clashed with spears, arrows, slings, and clubs, the Spanish suffered no losses while 7,000 Incas were killed. Atahualpa was struck on the head and taken captive. Atahualpa's Ransom and Death Pizarro held Atahualpa captive and demanded a ransom. Atahualpa offered a substantial sum himself. He was promised his freedom if a room measuring 6, 2 by 4, 8 meters was filled with Inca treasure stacked up to a height of 2, 5 meters. Over 8 months, the Incas accumulated a staggering amount of wealth, including gold jewelry and idols, filling the room three times with silver objects. The total value of these treasures would be equivalent to over $300 million today. During this time, Atahualpa continued to govern his empire from captivity. Pizarro sent exploratory missions to Cusco and Pachacamac while waiting for reinforcements from Panama. He enticed more support by sending a quantity of gold, hinting at the immense wealth available. However, after receiving the ransom, Pizarro went back on his promise and had Atahualpa put on trial. Despite the Inca king agreeing to be baptized, he was executed on July 26, 1533 CE. Initially sentenced to be burned at the stake, his sentence was changed to death by strangulation after he agreed to conversion. Pizarro's decision to execute Atahualpa drew criticism from some of his men and even the Spanish king. Yet, Pizarro recognized the immense influence the Inca king held over his people, even in captivity. He understood that only Atahualpa's death could ensure the complete downfall of the Incas. Remarkably, even after his death, Atahualpa's severed head gave rise to the enduring Incari legend. According to Inca beliefs, the head would eventually grow a new body, and their ruler would return to defeat the Spanish and restore their world order. The period of Atahualpa's captivity revealed deep divisions within the Inca Empire, which the Spanish would later exploit to their advantage. Pizarro held Atahualpa captive and demanded a ransom. Atahualpa offered a substantial sum himself. He was promised his freedom if a room measuring 6, 2 by 4, 8 meters was filled with Inca treasure stacked up to a height of 2, 5 meters. Over 8 months, the Incas accumulated a staggering amount of wealth, including gold jewelry and idols, filling the room three times with silver objects. The total value of these treasures would be equivalent to over $300 million today. During this time, Atahualpa continued to govern his empire from captivity. Pizarro sent exploratory missions to Cusco and Pachacamac while waiting for reinforcements from Panama. He enticed more support by sending a quantity of gold, hinting at the immense wealth available. However, after receiving the ransom, Pizarro went back on his promise and had Atahualpa put on trial. Despite the Inca king agreeing to be baptized, he was executed on July 26, 1533 CE. Initially sentenced to be burned at the stake, his sentence was changed to death by strangulation after he agreed to conversion. Pizarro's decision to execute Atahualpa drew criticism from some of his men and even the Spanish king. Yet, Pizarro recognized the immense influence the Inca king held over his people, even in captivity. He understood that only Atahualpa's death could ensure the complete downfall of the Incas. Remarkably, even after his death, Atahualpa's severed head gave rise to the enduring Incari legend. According to Inca beliefs, the head would eventually grow a new body, and their ruler would return to defeat the Spanish and restore their world order. The period of Atahualpa's captivity revealed deep divisions within the Inca Empire, which the Spanish would later exploit to their advantage. 
After dealing with the leadership of the Inca Empire by capturing and executing Atahualpa, the Spanish turned their attention to conquering Cusco, the heart of the empire. Reports of the city's vast golden treasures, shared by Hernando Pizarro from his reconnaissance mission, fueled their determination. Their strategy was to conquer Cusco and then extend their control over the rest of the empire. Their first significant encounter was against troops loyal to Atahualpa near Hachinzaxa. The Spanish received help from the local population, who were pleased to see the end of Inca rule. They also obtained supplies from Inca storehouses, which became a recurring pattern of support throughout their conquest. The invaders continued their campaign by defeating a retreating Inca army at Vilcaswaman. While they faced occasional challenges and even suffered a surprise attack, their march remained relentless. They encountered brief resistance in Cusco, which they eventually overcame. On November 15, 1533 CE, the city surrendered to Pizarro with minimal resistance. The treasures of the city, including the golden artifacts of the Coracancha Temple, were ruthlessly seized and melted down. Pizarro's attempt to establish a puppet ruler, Thupahualpa, failed to restore order, and he soon succumbed to illness. Another puppet ruler, Manco Inca, was installed. Although he prevented the collapse of the state, Pizarro and his forces departed to pacify the rest of the empire and uncover additional riches. The Spanish encountered significant resistance in the northern territories, facing armies led by Rumanawi and Quisquiz. Despite these challenges, internal conflicts within the Inca forces led to their capitulation and the death of their leaders. The Spanish continued their unrelenting conquest, capitalizing on the Inca mode of warfare, which was highly ritualistic and lacked tactics like deceit and ambush. The Incas tried to adapt, learning to combat cavalry by flooding attacked areas or engaging in rough terrain. However, their traditional weapons such as spears, slings, and clubs were no match for the firearms, crossbows, swords, and steel armor of the Spanish. Furthermore, the Spanish enjoyed support from factions within the old Inca society due to pre-existing rivalries. As the Spanish assumed control, they confronted the challenges of managing their vast empire, which spanned a wide geographical area. Despite the well-constructed road system left by the Incas, communication and control remained problematic. Rebellions and defections emerged across the empire. Manco Inca even rebelled against the Spanish, attempting to gain power for himself. Cusco and the newly established Spanish stronghold of Ciudad de los Reyes, Lima, were besieged by large Inca armies. Despite the challenges, the Spanish held their ground, leading the Inca attackers to retreat. The Inca armies faced difficulties as they were primarily composed of farmers who couldn't leave their harvests behind without risking their community's survival. Although the sieges were lifted, the Spanish resistance continued. When key Inca leaders were targeted and eliminated by the Spanish, the resistance crumbled. Manco Inca retreated south and established an Inca enclave at Vilcabamba. This resistance persisted for four more decades. Ultimately, in 1572 CE, Spanish forces led by Viceroy Toledo captured the Inca King Thupa Amaru, bringing him to Cusco for execution. With this, the last Inca ruler was gone, marking the end of any hope to restore their once mighty empire. Atahualpa, having emerged victorious in the war against his brother, initiated a comprehensive renewal by destroying Inca Quipu records and silencing historians. This act symbolized the Inca concept of Pachacuti, a profound transformation of time and space that the Incas believed occurred cyclically throughout history. Ironically, Atahualpa himself experienced a Pachacuti as the new rulers from the old world arrived, engaging in the widespread looting, burning, and destruction of Andean cultural artifacts. This arrival turned the new world upside down, forever altering its course. Following a period of internal turmoil, including the assassination of Pizarro, the Spanish eventually established a stable colonial government in 1554 CE. The indigenous people of the Andean region, who had cultivated their way of life for millennia despite the Inca disruption, now faced new challenges brought about by this transformative epoch. However, they were comparatively fortunate. By 1570 CE, half of the pre-Columbian Andean population had been decimated by war and disease. For those who survived, there was no relief from the oppressive rule of foreign conquerors, who continued to exploit their resources and impose an alien religion upon them. 